Hi everyone, just want to show you a quick video of how you can set up and schedule a virtual meeting in your D2L eHub classroom. So the first thing you want to do, log into the eHub. I'm hoping most of you know how to do that. If you don't, send me an email and I can help you. Click on your course. You'll see your course is listed here or up here. Once you're in your course, you should see the virtual meeting icon in your nav bar right here at the top. If you don't see that, I'll just quickly show you how you can add that. So you're gonna click on edit this nav bar. It might ask you to work with a copy of the nav bar. Say yes, and then it'll take you to this edit nav bar screen. And that's the icons you currently have in your classroom and you're gonna to wanna to go down here to the bottom corner and add links. Do a quick search for virtual, uh, check that off, click add. And now you've got the virtual meeting icon available. I'd move it up here somewhere around the top. Perfect. And then at the bottom, save and close. And now you have the virtual meeting icon in your classroom. So now to set up the meeting, we'll click on virtual meeting. And here we go. So to start off, you want to press the plus sign in the bottom right corner to schedule the meeting. You always have to give it a title. Please give it something better than, than my title. And you don't have to schedule the date or the time if you don't want to. If it's if it's a, something you're starting right away, you can click on now. And that'll just get that meeting going uh, right away. Most of you will schedule the time. So let's say we're going to do it tomorrow. And we're going to do it at 11 a.m. Choose your times. You'll see the times there. Make sure you're on a.m. or p.m. properly. Click OK. Now I've got a meeting scheduled tomorrow at 11 a.m. I can change the duration. I think it defaults 15, 30, or 60. So for now, put 60. Whether it repeats or not, that's up to you. And now here's the part that you're going to need to make sure you do. You have to invite your class. If you wanted external participants, you can check that off. You can publish the meeting if you want, or you can automatically record the meeting. Let's just say we're going to automatically record it and publish it in case anyone misses it but you must make sure you've got invite entire class checked off or it causes an error. We figured that out yesterday. So now we've got a meeting. Looks like we're all good. We've got it scheduled. We're going to save it and our meeting has been created. We can see there and there it is. Once you come in, you can launch the meeting. You'll be the, the host of the meeting. You can edit those details or you can cancel the meeting if you want. So now if you head back to the main page of your class, now you'll see that meeting right here in your calendar and that'll give notification to your students that there's a meeting and there's the link and they can click on that link and it'll take them right into that meeting and when the when it's time for the meeting they'll be able to enter the meeting room and, and, and all that kind of stuff. You can also copy that link if you want, post that in your news just to notify them, hey guys there's a meeting coming up and here's how you get there if you wanted to do that. Um, but you don't have to, it's already listed in your calendar, you can just notify them, take a look at the calendar, there's a meeting coming up. Yeah, that looks a little nicer. So that's just another way you can notify them that there's a meeting coming up. Now, once the time comes for your meeting, your students and yourself, you can click on the links here. You can click on the link in the calendar, but you can also just click on virtual meeting and it'll take you in and you'll see your scheduled meeting and you'll launch it. And there's your invite link if you if you need that again to, to paste for your students. Uh, it gives you a few little tips and things, but you're going to click on enter meeting. Um, hopefully they'll click microphone, but you can deal with that later when you go in in the settings. And it'll tell you as people join the conference, you can see your list of participants here on the side. Obviously now there's only me, but you'll see your list of participants. There's also a chat over here. If people wanted to chat uh, using just their, just typing, they can chat on the side, ask questions, things like that. If you're going to show a slideshow or you want to show a video or, or anything like that, you can upload a presentation. So most likely uh, if you're uploading anything, it'd be something like a slideshow that you have. You can also poll your class, create a little poll, ask them some questions and you can mute everybody. If everyone has their mics on and you're getting some issues and talking, things, you can mute everyone. You're in charge and control in here. Over on this side, I wouldn't do too much uh, in here in the settings area. And then there's tools over here, so you can write with text, draw, you can you can do whatever you want uh, with the annotator over here on the side, play around with that. Down here is where your, your microphone will be on, and then you can also share your video. You don't have to share video, you can just have your meeting without video at all, but if you wanted to sh share your camera, you could. Uh, that's going to take up a lot more bandwidth, and I don't know if all of your students have a lot of bandwidth, but you can share your camera, uh, and your students can share their cameras, but that's not necessary, so it's something you can you can 
turn off and you don't have to do that. They can still hear you. You can still show your slideshow. You can still annotate on the screen. You don't need to share your camera. And the other thing you can do down here is to share your screen. So if, if you if you haven't uploaded a presentation over here, you can share your screen and maybe you're demonstrating something off of your screen on your on your computer as well. Maybe it's a slideshow, maybe it's a video, maybe you know whatever that may be, some notes, some some, some lessons. And it'll ask you to share your screen and choose your screen. I forgot to mention you can record the meeting if you'd like to. So now we just turn on the recording so the session is being recorded. This is a way you can have students look back on the session, a way you can post it for anyone that wasn't there, things like that. So I recorded this. I will now stop the recording. We're going to end the meeting. Let's end it. And any recorded meetings will show up down here in the recorded meetings area. And once the meeting's there, you can also grab the link and post that into your news or anywhere else inside your course so people can have a place to go back and look at recorded meetings. This is a great way to connect with your students, a great way to check in with them, talk with them, a great way to connect with them, make them feel like they're a part of a classroom. It doesn't have to be to even do any lessons. It could just be a check-in. Maybe it's just a question and answer period. So get in here, play around. Let me know if you have any questions about virtual meeting. I think it's a really powerful tool, and I think there's a definite way you can use this and use it well in your virtual teaching. Thanks a lot, guys.